Hello everyone. Welcome to a new video of Dr. Tat Can Code. In this video, I'm going to talk about decrease and conquer algorithms. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Dr. Han Fan. I have been teaching and programming for more than a decade. I would love to share my knowledge to the community. Let's get started. Okay, before we jump right into the decrease and conquer algorithms, let's look at the definition. If you stick around until the end of the videos, I will show you some very practical Python example of this decrease and conquer strategies. Okay, so when we talk about decrease and conquer algorithms, we try to decrease the problem to a smaller instance of the same problem either through iteration or recursion until the problem instance is small enough to be conquered. From here, depending on the problem, it may extend the solution gradually to find the solution of the original problem. Sometimes through the reduction, you reduce to the point that you just find the solution for the original problem directly. So it really depends, it really depends on the problem as well. So the pro of this decrease and conquer strategy is that the problem size is gradually reduced, which may lead to an which may lead to an efficient algorithm because you tend to have smaller size over times and as you already know from my other video on big O notation, the size of the problem is uh, directly related to the complexity, to the time complexity of the problem. And if the algorithm itself with the aim to reduce that size over time, that, that may lead to some uh, more efficient algorithm uh, if, we up, up, if we apply these strategies. So the con of uh, this strategy is that not all problems can be reduced to a similar problem of smaller size. That's, that's, the, that's the challenge. So this is not always possible, but when it is possible, it is uh, quite straightforward and it can, lead to an it can lead to an efficient algorithm. Okay, so let's look at the three different strategies for decrease and conquer algorithms. The first strategy is decrease by some constant. For example, at each iteration, you reduce the subspace or the problem size by one. Decrease by some constant factor is the second strategy in which at each iteration, you reduce the problem size by half or by three times, so on and so forth constantly. The third strategy is that at each iteration, you decrease the size of the problem by a variable amount, which means the reduction size changes it over time. Okay, so these are the three strategies. Thank you for sticking around uh, until this moment of the video. If you think this type of content is useful, please make sure to like and subscribe to the channel to make it easier for you to see the next video from me. Thank you. So let's jump right into the first example. So the first example, I'm going to use a function to demonstrate the decrease by constant strategy. Particularly, I'm going to look at the algorithm called linear search. If you look at uh, this section over here, I have written a function in Python taking an input which is, a, which, is a, which is an array and there's a target, which is the item that we want to look for in the array. So the linear search algorithm will search through the input list to find a specific element. As you can see here in my for loop, I'm running uh, through all the elements of my uh, array and then I compare each element to the target. And if it's not matching, 
I will move on to the next emblem element until I match uh, the target, then I return the index of that target. After the for loop, if I don't have any return before, I will return my that one. It means I don't see the, the target element in my list. Okay. So you can see the decrease and conquer strategy, strategy right here. After each iteration of the for loop, my search space is reduced by one. So decrease by a constant, in this case, one, one element. And the complexity of this algorithm is ON because it um, does go through all the elements of the array and at each iteration, it reduces the problem size by one. So, you know, to reach zero, it needs to go through all the N items. Okay, that's the first example. The second example, is to illustrate the decrease by some constant factor strategies. In this example, I'm going to look at the binary search algorithm. So if you look at my if you look at my Python code over here, the binary search algorithm will try to find the index of a target value in a sorted array. So the input array here is a sorted list and I want to find a target inside this sorted list. So different from the previous example in the linear search, in the binary search, the input array, I already know that it has been sorted, for example, in an increasing order in this uh, example. So my binary search algorithm will need to index, one is low and one another one is high. Low is initialized with zero and high is initialized with the um, the last, the index of the last item of the list, okay? So why low still less than or equal to high? It means my low and high are in two sides of the sorted array now. So I will not compare from left to right gradually because I, I know the list is sorted. So I immediately jump to the middle of the list. I will take the middle of the list by taking the floor division of low plus high divided by two. With this, I can check if the middle value is equal to the target or not. If it is, I can return the mid as the index. If the middle value is less than the target because the list is sorted. So if the middle uh, value is less than the target, uh, it means uh, my, my numbers, my target has to be on the right side, on the higher side of the list, right? So in this, in this case, I will change the low to middle plus one. So I omit, I reduce the, I decrease the suspect by half by not taking into consideration the first half the first smaller half of the list anymore because I know that target is greater than the middle point. So there's no point of checking all the elements that is smaller than the middle point, right? Does it make sense? Because now target is greater than the middle point and the list is sorted. So this, I now just need to look for all the elements in the greater half of the sorted list. This way I have effectively reduced or decreased the suspect by half. So which is a constant factor. On the other hand, if the target is a uh, smaller than the middle point, I can ignore the greater half of the list. And I just keep the smaller half uh, for the suspect in the next iteration of the while loop. This way I can just change the high to the middle minus one. And I keep the low as it is because now I can, because I know target is smaller than the middle point. So I just look for the smaller size, the smaller side of the uh, sorted list in this case. That's one iteration. I reduce the suspect by half. In the next iteration, now my low and high indexes have been updated in from the previous iteration. 
to reflect which side of the which half of the sorted list I'm looking I'm looking for my target, and I keep doing that at every iteration. I effectively reduce my search by by half, so decrease by a constant factor. Because my um, because the way I I quickly uh, reduce my search by my complexity is much better than example one. So now the complexity is O log N, which is much faster than O N in example one. Okay, so that is example number two, another decrease and conquer strategy using the decrease of uh, a constant factor and in each iteration. In the third example, I'm going to looking. I'm going to look at the decrease by a variable amount. So the reduction size changes at each iteration. So it's not a fixed number. A very classic uh, algorithm that uh, utilizes the decrease by variable amount strategy is the greatest common divisor using Euclidean algorithms or GCD. At each iteration, A and B are both decreased. A becomes B and B becomes the remainder of A divided by B. So the algorithm is super compact right here. It takes uh, two input A and B, and I want to find the greatest common divisor of A and B. So why B is not zero, I will swap A with the value of B, and I will swap B with the value of the remainder of A divided by B or A modulus B, okay? And I keep doing that until B is zero. Then I will just return A, which is the greatest common divisor of A and B. So as you can see over here, the problem size starting with A and B, but after each iteration, the problem side now become B and A modulus B. And I keep doing that at each iteration. So the reduction side is not a fixed number. It's not, you know, a, a constant. Also, it's not um, a constant factor. It is variable. It changes every iteration. But the whole motivation is to try to decrease the problem size and try to conquer the problem and find a solution. The, for those of you who are curious, the complexity of GCD algorithm using Euclidean algorithms is O log A or B, depending on which one is smaller. So O log mean of A and B. So what, whatever number that is smaller. So it is an it, this Euclidean algorithm is efficient and it utilizes the, the decrease and conquer strategy in which each iteration the problem size is reduced by a variable amount. That's all the three examples demonstrating all three different strategy in decrease and conquer algorithms. Thank you very much for watching, guys. Make sure to like and subscribe to make it easy for you to see the next video. Thank you for watching again. Thank you for being part of the Cat and Code community. See you in the next video. Goodbye.